Hello everybody, welcome back to Firefield Junction and yeah, as you probably guessed it, once again, we've got another review for us today. Uh, today's logo, as we can see, is by Backman, um, it's quite an old model, um, but it's the Colette's Goods uh, class that we've got today, um, also known as the 2251 class. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's another steamer, I know, <laughs> Being a, despite being a modern, modern image fan, yeah, I seem to be uh, buying quite a lot of steam logos, uh, especially recently. Uh, but yeah, I just couldn't resist uh, getting one of these. Um, being a GWR fan uh, and being based near the Great Western Main Line, um, I just I just got a thing uh, for Great Western kettles. To be honest, for, for, for Great Western steam locomotives, there's just something about them uh, that's just I don't find that's not like a lot of other steam locomotives from other companies, and uh, such as the LMS, uh, the LNR, uh, and so on. Um, there's something about them that I just prefer. And I just, I just absolutely love compared to other locos from other companies. And this is just one of those locos that I fell in love with. It's just as soon as I saw it, I thought, I really like that. I really want to get one. And so here we are. And uh, now the uh, Colette's Goods slash 2251 um, in real life. They started building them in 1930. Um, they finished building them in 1948. So that is a very, very long time uh, for a loco to be built. Um, so they built them right up into the BR days um, after pri privatisation and they built 120 of them, which is quite a lot. That's a lot of locomotives. Um, however, despite that massive number built, only one survived. Uh, unfortunately, we've only got one left, but at least we've got one. It's better than not having any at all. There is still one left um, and it's based uh, down in the southwest. Um, I think last time I checked, um, I think it was on the South Devon Railway, I think. Um, it has run on the East Seven Valley Railway. It's been on the West Somerset Railway as well, um, which, according to the actual information uh, leaflet, um, are on the back of the card insert in this box. Um, it does actually say that um, obviously it's just obviously the time when Batman released this model because it is quite old. Um, it actually says that she was based at West Somerset Railway. Um, obviously, during when again when this model was released, that's obviously where she was at the time. However, doing a bit more research uh, from that, um, I've at least seen whether it's true or not. Um, it, last time it said she was on the South Devon Railway um, awaiting overhaul because her boiler ticket expired. Um, so she's currently in storage. Um, so whether that's true or not, let me know below. Um, is she still in storage? Is she currently being overhauled? Um, it'd be nice to know if she's going to come back into service anytime soon. Um, but yeah, that, apparently that's where she is at the moment. Uh, but again, whether it's true or not, I don't know. Um, now this model by Batman, again, it is quite old, um, as you can tell by the box, it is quite an old model. Um, I don't think they've released the Colette's goods for quite a long time. Um, I'm pretty sure they have done it um, with their modern packaging and their modern block of ice packaging and such. Um, although, again, could be wrong about that as well. Um, but I don't think they've produced this model for quite a long time, um, which is a shame because it's quite a nice model. Um, it'd be nice if they brought it back at some point. Um, I'm sure it'd be due, it's due an update. It'd be nice to have a brand new, a nice, really modern version um, of the loco bought out um, for a reasonable price as well, <laughs> that'd be good. Um, but still, these older versions, um, despite how old this model is, um, because according to the um, date printed on the inside of the flap of the box, um, just on this flap here, and the date is printed on it, so this model, um, at the very least, um, I don't know if it was when it was released, um, it's probably when it was, I'm guessing it's when it was uh, packaged up and everything from the factory. Um, this one was released in um, late October 2008, so it's 15 years old now, getting on 15 years old, uh, so quite old. Um, but despite that, it's still not a bad model. Um, obviously, it does show its age in areas, um, but still, for its age, it's not too bad at all. Um, now, there's not, not much else interesting on the box, really, apart from the <laughs> uh, photo on the front. Um, we can see on the end of the box there, just the usual stuff. So we've got the model code 32-302. Um, it's 2251 Colette's Goods uh, class, I'm guessing, well, see, a bit of the things missing there on the end. Um, it's a BR lined green, uh, this particular one. Um, and then the L, I think that's LC, I think they might say. I'm guessing it's lined. Um, oh no, Lake Crest, I think, is what that means. Yeah, that's what it means, Lake Crest. That's what the, um, it's, it's not early emblem, it's Lake Crest on this one. So basically, probably the, livery, the last livery these, these would have carried. Um, obviously, they did carry GWR green, as you can obviously tell by the photo. Um, they did carry BR Black later on in their life, and then later on after that, so even later on at the very end of their life, I think, um, they got painted into BR Lined Green with the Lake Crest and stuff. Um, so plenty of liveries available if you want one. But anyway, let's open the box and we'll have a look at the particular one I've got here. So 
if you lift up the flap, you can see the date there, 8th of October, well, 2008, 10 uh, October to 21st. I don't know why they print the dates backwards, <laughs> um, but they do. So there we go, we see the logo there, get that out, we'll grab the insert as well. Um, so still got all the usual stuff in here, got all the paperwork and everything. So that's just the collector's club, I think, and the warranty. Don't worry about that. But anyway, we've got the instructions here. So I'll have a quick look at these. Ooh, there we go. So there we go. So all the usual stuff that we're used to. So where all the parts are, should you need to replace any. Um, should be quite easy to get some. Backman Spares website. So since they released it, it's incredibly helpful. You can literally buy absolutely everything on there. You can probably, to us, you can probably buy so many parts on there. You can literally build your own logo from scratch if you wanted to. Um, I've considered it, uh, but don't think I'm going to do it anytime soon. Uh, but as you can see there, it's uh, fairly basic inside. So there's not too much going on inside. It literally is just inside this logo. The motor is in the smoke box here, facing down, and it just contacts uh, the gear on the um, rear axle there, straight from that. And that's pretty much it, I think. There's not really too much to it. Um, very basic mechanism, but then again, not really a lot of room inside so the boiler and smoke box, because it is quite a thin smoke, uh, smoke box and boiler. Not really enough room in there to fit a um, one of Batman's typical um, large can motors that they used at the time. Um, so it kind of makes sense they put it in the smoke box, more room in there and such. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, uh, yeah, typical instructions really. Uh, nothing on the other side. So you can put them to one side. And then on the insert, uh, nothing else really. Got a nice photo there. And then on the back there, as we can see, all the information about the loco. And you can see there, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the last but only preserved one, 32205, uh, says currently preserved on the West Somerset Railway, although I'm pretty sure it's not at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's on the South Devon Railway. But obviously, again, when Batman produced this, when they typed this up, that was obviously probably true. Um, but obviously, because it's again quite old, so it's not. <laughs> um, anyway, there's the loco. Um, now, she has been, I have taken her out of the box uh, briefly just to give her a quick clean and a quick run. Um, although she does need a bit of proper running in because I haven't run her too much. So I will give her a short running in before we uh, test her properly. And I have got some accessories, which is quite nice, despite how old the model is. Uh, yeah, so that's typical stuff. So you've got brake rigging, should you want to fit it. I've uh, got some vacuum pipes there as well. Um, and I think that's it. So I can't see anything else in there. I think it's literally just brake pipe, well, yeah, braking um, and the vacuum pipes. Um, I'm sure I'll fit them at some point. So I won't do them in the video, but I'm sure I'll fit them at some point. Uh, and that's pretty much it for accessories. Not too many, but at least we've got some. Uh, so I think what we need to do now, let's go get the loco out and have a look at her. Um, so we just gently ease her out of the polystyrene tray. Obviously not great packaging really, but <laughs> pretty standard for the time. And there we are, there she is. Uh, so yeah, which is not too bad. Um, obviously she's not the most detailed model in the world, uh, which is okay. It's obviously quite strange uh, being a tender loco, quite surprised how small she is. And they were uh, pretty strong locos. Um, they could achieve easily over 60 miles an hour, which is not too bad. Um, I don't know exactly how strong they were. I don't know what the power rating for them was. Um, but they did have, uh, as you can see there, the yellow uh, root indicator. So they could bro go pretty much everywhere due to their light weight. Um, so very versatile locomotives. Um, but it's the overall, yeah, not too bad. So the model's uh, pretty good as well. Got a nice handrail down the sides. Um, it does look, I think it's a bit chunky, I think, uh, for the loco. But again, old model, probably not going to be as dimensionally accurate uh, compared to newer ones. Um, but the delivery application is very, very nice. Can't see any blemishes anywhere on the paintwork. You've got a proper copper plated uh, chimney uh, on top there, on the top of the on top of the funnel. It's proper that is metal, that is proper uh, die cast piece. And it feels very nice as well. You have got sprung buffers and they feel very nice as well. Nice metal sprung buffers. Uh, the cab detail, um, yeah, <laughs> very basic. Um, there's not much there to be honest. There is some, but it's uh, plenty of uh, there's quite a, quite a lot of nice molded detail there. But it's not separately painted, so there's no separately fitted parts in there. Um, but if you want to, you could paint it if you want to. Probably won't be too hard to do that. Um, but it doesn't look too bad, I suppose. They've got some nice uh, more ham rails there um, holding up the cab roof. Uh, now, the tender connection on this loco, um, yes, <laughs> almost a bit kiddified, really, isn't it? Um, it's very, very basic. It literally just hooks over the tender. When I grab the tender, I'll show you how it works, but I'm sure you can obviously already tell. Um, yeah, very basic tender connection, but it does the job. It works well. Um, obviously, as you can probably tell, no electrical connection. 
there are no tender pickups on this loco, um, which isn't great really. Um, obviously, she should she should still be quite reliable with uh, all her driving wheels picking up. But obviously, more a more modern uh, release of this loco would have tender pickups, which would make her a lot more reliable. Um, so yeah, not uh, really that good. Not really that good, is it? Um, but um, it could be worse because she could only pick up from one set of driving wheels, so it could be worse. Um, but obviously, it could be better as well. But still, three wheels picking up her rail is not too bad. It should still be enough as long as you keep her clean, keep the track clean. She should be fine. Um, but yeah, can't complain too much, can you? Um, the couplings are NEM on this loco. You've got some nice NEM couplings, and they are small, slim tension lock couplings as well. Um, you can see the screws there for the base key plates. Uh, the connecting rods um, are, have been done very nicely. Nice molded, um, nicely molded pieces and metal as well, obviously. Um, so yeah, overall she's not too bad. She is, uh, she is fairly basic. She is a fairly basic locomotive, but still for her age, she's not too bad. She looks very, very good, especially having, I think, having, especially having that metal uh, copper chimney as well. That really does uh, help the local, I think, especially. And despite how basic of the detail is, it is uh, all mostly moulded. Um, I think the whistles uh, might be metal. Um, they're not too sure though. They do feel um, quite sturdy. They don't, don't feel like they're going to break off at all. Um, and they look very good as well. They're nicely moulded. Um, but overall, uh, despite uh, there's quite a lot. Well, I'm saying it's not too much. But again, you've got quite a lot of riveting detail, especially on the cab roof there, on the smoke box, on the running plate as well. Despite how basic she is, um, there's still quite a lot of detail for her age. It's not too bad, um, I think, especially uh, considering the price I paid. Mine, I paid about £35 for this loco, so that's definitely a 10 out of 10 value for money. Really, really good value for money. I paid a lot more uh, for smaller locos of the same age. So overall, not too bad. But anyway, let's put her to one side, have a quick look at the tender. See, <laughs> a lot, lot lighter because there's obviously no motor or anything in it. Uh, but despite that, the tender is still not too bad. Again, you can see down the side, loads of riveted detail. Uh, livery application, again, really, really nice. You can see all the uh, spring detail for the suspension on the tender. Um, you can see, obviously, where the uh, brake rigging goes. Uh, you've got some nice hammer rails down the front. Um, the coal load, uh, it's not the best looking coal load, to be honest. It's quite bland. It uh, <laughs> doesn't look as good, I think, as other coal loads. Um, but uh, she is a bit dusty to us. she is uh, quite dirty um, but overall it's not too bad um, obviously it could be better but it's not too bad again more sprung buffers on the back another uh, NEM oh, well actually no <laughs> that's actually quite surprising with this one the rear coupling is not NEM so you've got have got a NEM coupling on the front of the loco but on the tender you haven't uh, so that's quite strange I don't know why they've done that because they probably could have quite easily fitted um, a coupling, a NEM coupling pocket on there, but for whatever reason on this loco uh, they haven't. But again, it's nice, it's still a slim, small tension lock coupling, uh, which isn't too bad. It could be worse, it could be a large one, which obviously wouldn't be very good, um, but a small one, that's fine, that's acceptable. Um, but overall, yeah, despite that, there's not really too much else on the tender. You've got the water scoop there, um, but overall, um, it's, it's a fairly basic tender to be honest. Um, but again, we have seen more. We have seen there is worse out there. For again, for its age, it's still not too bad. You've got the uh, handbrake detail there. You can see the coal coming through the hatch there. It's not too bad. It looks the part, and that's the main thing. It looks the part, and especially for the money that I paid, it's perfectly fine. Obviously, if Batman released this model today, exactly like this, uh, for a modern price tag of what 150 quid odd, probably something it would be, at least, then no, complete rip off. Absolutely not acceptable. But for, certainly for the money that I paid and the second hand prices that you can get these for as well. Um, so you'd be lucky, very lucky to get one for as cheap as I did. But even I'd say for 40 to 50 quid, it's still not too bad. Um, obviously the tender just hooks onto the loco literally as follows. If I can get it in. Uh, come on. There you go. That's it. It's literally hooks under that bit of plastic there. And that's how they couple together. Um, it's not too bad though, it's quite close. Um, obviously, uh, there are a lot of other mechanisms that, mechanisms out there uh, for loco to tender connection that are uh, technically better, but they don't couple as close together. So I think, considering considering this model's age again, that's not too bad, it's pretty close, uh, not too bad at all. Um, so yeah, overall, she is quite a basic loco. 
Um, she isn't DCC ready, um, as I should mention. Um, she is not a DCC ready model, um, or they could probably could already tell that, uh, associated from the instructions. Um, if you want to convert this loco to DCC, it will need hard wiring. I will show you how to do that in a future video. I will show you how to DCC fit this loco. Um, but considering, uh, one thing considering, that literally the motor pretty much takes up all of the space inside the smoke box there, the decoder pretty much does have to go in the tender. Um, so it's not the easiest job in the world converting this model to DCC. Um, but again, I will show you how to do it. I'll show you how it's done. Um, obviously I'll show you how I'll do it. Um, obviously it's not how you exactly have to do it, but I will show you how to do it. But obviously for today's review, we're going to be on analog, but that's fine. That's how the loco is by default. So that's how I should show you how to, how to run her. So let's go head up to the layout and um, we'll give her a quick running in to make sure she's all uh, warmed up and potentially lubricated and everything. And then we'll couple her up to her train and we'll see what she's like. Okay, so here we are back over by the layout once again. Obviously we're on the inner loop today because we're going to be running DC because obviously this logo hasn't got a chip in it yet. So if we just grab her and we'll put her on, should be nice and easy. There we go. I can grab the tender and the tender literally just hooks on. And there we go. And there we go, I think she's on. Just make sure. Yep, all wheels are on, so that's good. So let's give her a bit of a wiggle to see what she's like. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad to be honest. Um, she hasn't had a proper service yet since, uh, since she uh, since I got her. All I've literally done is just given the wheels a quick clean to try and give her a good chance of getting around the layout. Now, she's had a small amount of running time around the layout um, for this video and uh, she seems to be okay. I'm not sure how um, long she'd been ran, has been since, she, since she'd been ran by her previous owner. Um, however, she's definitely been well looked after. She definitely she runs quite well. And let's just see what her crawl's like at the moment. Now, obviously, this isn't a very basic Hornby controller, um, so it's going to be a bit noisy. But so let's see how smooth it is. So it's not absolutely not absolutely brilliant. Yeah, a bit of high speed about there. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad to be honest. It's quite an old loco, a very basic DC controller. That's not too bad. In reverse. So yeah, it's not absolutely mind blowing, but certainly for a loco of this age with the controller this basic, that is very, very good, I think. But anyway, let's get her running around, get her warmed up, and then we'll put some coaches behind her, I think. Because I think that'll look very good, won't it? Yeah, that'll look great, won't it? So let's just get her running and then we'll see what she's like. So I've got her going at 50% speed. And that seems to be perfectly fine. She's running nice and smoothly. Obviously, she is a bit noisy, which is, well, it's kind of expected, to be honest. Obviously, if you run this on a better controller, it should be a lot quieter. So I won't mark her down for being noisy, but she's not that noisy, is she? I have had a louder locos than this. But yeah, it's not too bad. Very nice performer. Okay, so she's had a good few minutes running and I've now stuck some coaches on behind her. I've only put four on, so I doubt she'll be, a hand, be able to handle much more than that. Um, I have quickly tested it and she does will slip ever so slightly, um, but she does seem to be able, be able to handle perfectly fine. Um, and I doubt she would have hauled trains much longer than this, to be honest. Um, she wouldn't, I doubt she would have been hauling massive express trains um, for, a lot, for a very long period of time. Um, she probably would have been more uh, regional, uh, smaller um, services, I reckon. Um, but yeah, looks pretty good, I think. Nice looking train. So uh, let's get her running and we'll see what she's like with a load. Okay, go a little bit faster this time.
overall, she's a fantastic logo. Definitely not the most detailed or the best performing in the world. But certainly great value for money, definitely. I mean, the money that I managed to get this logo for is insane. Always good shows to have a look around, be patient, and eventually you'll very likely find a logo that you're looking for or interested in for an amazing price. That's, I certainly got that with this logo. I don't think she was even 35 quid, which is just insane, insane value for a logo like this. I certainly wouldn't pay over the odds for it. I think maybe a maximum somewhere, I would think no more than 55 to 60 quid, I reckon, would be the absolute maximum you want to pay for one of these at the absolute maximum. But yeah, she's great. I think this would be a, a very nice logo for Batman to bring back as a more modern logo. If they retooled it, gave it a better chassis, added some better details, it would be a very, very excellent model, I think. But still, the old ones, they certainly still have their place. They're not that old, really, by modern standards. Certainly on the outside. But yeah. Fantastic. Excellent locomotive from Batman. And now let's have some ratings for the Batman GWR Codex Goods Class. So first of all, the detail I've given 8 out of 10 for this loco. Now overall the detail is not too bad. You've got some very nice decoration, you have got some nice separately fitted parts, including the metal handrails around the smoke box and boiler, they look very nice. You've got sprung buffers, they look very good as well. And again, overall it's not too bad, the detail is good, whilst a lot of it, a lot of it is a moulded detail, it has been done rather well. But then again, whilst, it, whilst the detail does look good, I think the lack of separately fitted detail on this loco is one of the things that brings it down slightly. Uh, for example, the coal load, it's not removable and it's not the best looking in the world in my opinion. Uh, you've got no separately fitted smoke box dart either on the, ca on the cab, on the front of the smoke box. Uh, and I think so overall the loco does look a little bit plain in areas. However, with all that said, it still does look very good. When the loco is running, it does look very presentable. And we have seen worse uh, locos in the past, and there are a lot worse locos uh, out there than this. So definitely not the best detailed loco in the world, but still, then again, not the worst. The performance overall, the performance for this loco isn't too bad. It's nice and smooth, it's consistent. She's got plenty of speed, plenty of torque. Uh, she's quite strong as well. Overall, it's not too bad. I just think the one little thing that lets this down slightly is the loco is a bit of a noisy one. Now, again, I know that's partially because of the controller that I use, uh, but still, I think maybe the performance could be slightly better than what it is. Um, there are better performers out there. I have definitely seen better performers, and I have got better performers in my collection. However, with all that said, still, she's not too bad of a runner. Again, very nice, smooth, consistent, can't really ask for too much more, really. And now the quality of this loco, I think this is where the loco does fall down slightly. Whilst overall she's not too bad, she's put together very well, and the loco weighs quite a bit as well. I think for a start, the finish on the loco, it's not the best in the world. It does look look a little bit matte, a little bit plain, a bit plasticky. Um, I think we've definitely seen better, and newer locos are definitely better than this. Again, I think this is the coal load, it's one of the things it lacks a little bit and maybe some of the uh, moulding is not the best in the world. You have got a bit of a parting line down the cab, which at the wrong light, uh, wrong light level, it does, it does look quite noticeable. Uh, the Loco to tender connection, I think, is one of the biggest things. Um, whilst it does work and it does the job, I'd say it's a little bit simple, and the Loco has no tender pickups either, which obviously does uh, interfere with the performance a bit. But then again, she does run very well, despite only having uh, locomotive pickups on the locomotive. She does run very well, she's nice and consistent, I haven't had her cut out once, but uh, overall it's not too bad. I think, again, it's just a few things here and there that I feel to let her down slightly and show her age. And then again, age is one of the things with this loco, because it is quite an old model, so we can't expect it to be the best in the world, it's uh, certainly not up to modern standards. Uh, but then again, overall not too bad. Again, she's assembled very well, the decoration is overall very nice, and she runs well, so definitely not the worst quality in the world. Now the value for money, I can't complain for the value for money for this loco. 
the price that I managed to get her for is just absolutely sensational. I think it was something like £35, if that. And for a loafer like this, you can't really ask for much, much better, to be honest. Absolutely amazing value for money. I have paid way, way more than this for locos that are much smaller and in some cases slightly worse as well. So value for money, definitely can't complain about it. It's definitely 10 out of 10. I really can't ask for much better, to be honest. And now I know that these locos, obviously usually you, you would be able, you would have to pay a bit more than what I paid, uh, certainly to get one of them. I don't know exactly what the RRP for these was when Batman, Batman first released them. But obviously it was quite a while ago, so finding it might be quite hard. Um, and I'm pretty sure Batman don't make this model anymore and they haven't done for a very long time. So finding an RRP for one of these models um, may be quite hard. You might be able to find one, um, but I certainly haven't been able to. So I haven't taken the RRP into consideration with this loco, but again, it is quite old, so there's probably not much point to be honest. Um, but yeah, overall, a very nice model. That's an overall score of 8.5 out of 10. Uh, very well deserved, I think. Again, slight room for improvements, improvements in a few areas. If Batman were to bring this back, I'm sure it would be a very nice model. Um, very expensive, I'm sure, as well. So the value for money certainly uh, probably wouldn't be as good as it, as it is with this one. But overall, not too bad at all.